Hello my friends, my family, my esteemed colleagues. Uh, today in this video I um, want to address one thing and this is the dual uh, energy supply that animals and humans have in their body. Um, as we know, the, uh, our cells produce energy in um, uh, little um, uh, organs, organelles that we call mitochondria. And uh, to produce energy, they can use two fuels. They say three proteins. This is partially truth. It's two fuels. One is glucose and one is fat. A white protein, because protein first degrades into glucose and then is being used. Why so? Because the base of fatty acids, or base of proteins, uh, are basically sugar. Uh, so, uh, how does this dual system work? I just was sent one article, which was older article, it's from 2016, um, uh, that was written by um, a diet doctor. It's dietdoctor.com. Uh, actually, I wrote now um, a little take on this article, which is going to be published in my blog tomorrow, and I will um, publish it also in other publications, uh, which I dissect this approach of this dual fuel, because um, whenever I'm in conversation with uh, health gurus, uh, most of them vegetarians or vegans, uh, they try to convince me that there is no big deal, big difference between glucose and fat, and that it's the same mechanism, uh, and the only thing is that sugar is preferred fuel for the cell. And here I want to dispute all of this because this actually leads to us believing that the glucose is actually good fuel when it is contrary. Uh, for example, we are being told that the blood sugar is there to supply the cells with the sugar that they need to produce energy. And this is utterly incorrect. How we know, how we know this? Because if we are fasting, our cells drop sugar because the, it's not available for energy production uh, and uh, they start using fat and we start feeling better and our, our body starts healing. Why? Because there was the absence of the what I call dietary glucose that comes into our body through diet and we still remain healthy levels of sugar in our blood. Well, blood is calibrated everything what is in the blood has a calibration point and uh, the things which are present in the blood are there for purpose. Now, yes, we have a sugar in the blood, but this sugar is not meant to be used as a fuel, same as uh, the cholesterol is not being meant to be used as a fat fuel, it has a different purpose. The purpose of cholesterol, I have explained in, even in videos that it is building material to reinforce cellular membranes to build or, or heal the cells. And um, the uh, uh, fuel that is being used as a fat is coming from triglyceride. Now, sh now the sugar that we found in the blood in a, its normal levels, which is uh, normally detected, which is be between 50 and uh, up to 90, uh, milligrams per, per uh, uh, milliliter. Uh, these levels of sugar are maintained so the cells can produce protein. Now, when these sugar levels increase over the calibration, now the cells really don't want to take it in. They really cannot take it in because the molecule is a little larger, so it does not penetrate easily through the membrane. So what happens is that cells have to be forced into accepting it. And they are forced through introduction of insulin 
into the bloodstream, which relaxes the membranes and gets them gets the cell to absorb the glucose. Now this is being done because the body does not know does not know what to do with this glucose. It cannot store it. There is no storage of glucose. Now here come where the partial knowledge stays in a way of the truth. I'm always being uh, attacked by vegans and vegetarians that are this the blood the body has its own reserves of glucose and uh, it's not called potato it's not called banana it's called glycogen well this is truth Bl uh, our cells do have glycogen reserves but not all the cells in the body we find glycogen only in our muscles the most biggest amount of glycogen is found in the muscles muscle tissue then there is a small amount in the brain and there is a small amount in the liver small amount yes it's never it's uh, seldom goes over 100 grams now we you know and now i am supposed to believe that 100 grams of glycogen is going to sustain my body for 24 hours this is utter nonsense because glucose has relatively low energy value uh, caloric value of um, uh, energy or caloric value of carbohydrate of glucose is less than half that than of the fat so fat should create way more energy and it does but to do so it needs a substantial amount of mitochondria inside of the cell and um, why do muscles have glycogen because glycogen is being used as a booster as a boosting fuel because it can produce an energy rapidly by uh, which means because mitochondria of animals and human uh, cells they have an uh, oxygen pump so basically they pumped in oxygen so what is um, fat uh, fat is nothing more than chain of carbon that is filled with hydrogen there's nothing else there now if every carbon is completely saturated with hydrogen then we call it saturated fat if some carbons are missing hydrogen then we are calling it them non-saturated fat and this occurs in different sequences so it can be every third uh, carbon that is missing hydrogen so we call it uh, omega-3 acids so whenever we say omega oils they are non-saturated oils uh, such oils everywhere where it's not saturated it's being connected with double bond which makes curvature in the molecule so what happens that uh, more unsaturated it is the more curved the molecule is and it cannot be compacted and it's liquid so unsaturated fats we called oils saturated fats we call simply fat because in room temperature in temperature below 28 oh, maybe maybe even lower but there are 28 degrees celsius they actually are in solid form butter is the example of this coconut oil also if you lower the temperature pew, it turns into coconut butter uh, so those are saturated fats now where the problem now in uh, manipulating of the fat on a cellular level is that fats are pro uh, cells are programmed to use fat fat has no problem to enter the cell there is a mechanism that supplies through um, uh, through triglycerides supplies the fats to the cell and then cell uses those fats turning them into ketones uh, as uh, halfway product and then ketones into ATP 
like it would turn a glucose there, which is energy uh, point. So, for this producing energy from fat, the cells need a lot of mitochondria. This is why when we are in fasting, and if we are exercising, our cells can have 3,000 mitochondria. If we are thinking, concentrating hard, our brain can have 4,000 mitochondria. And it will supply a huge amount of energy utilizing triglyceride. What is important that triglyceride is always present in the blood, same as the sugar. But low level sugars are not going to be absorbed for purpose of burning them as a fuel. That's the point. So the only thing we have left is glycogen. And glycogen we have only in muscle cells, in the brain, and in the liver. The glycogen which is in our muscles is produced there. And it's produced from a fat usually during the night when we sleep, which we don't eat and we don't have presence of elevated blood sugar. So cells are using fat and turning into glucose and bonding to protein. Why? Because they don't want this glucose to be available unless absolutely necessary. Because since glucose has oxygen in its uh, molecule, when more oxygen is being pushed in during the process of a citric cycle or Krebs cycle, the reaction is violent. It's very, very quick. And a huge amount of energy is being produced in a short period of time. So the cells actually become overcharged. If we go into stress situation, if, if glycogen is released and we cannot, we have no need for this energy, we start shaking because this energy has to be used. And this is why the mechanism of controlling how much glycogen is going to be allowed to be transformed into the glucose and being fed to the cells is controlled by stress hormones. And uh, depending on what kind of a stress you are, that much of glycogen uh, is going to be transformed. And also not in all the, all the body at the same time, unless it has to. So if you are attacked by some beast, of course, then your brain quickly has to accelerate its um, work of counting possibilities to see what to do if you are if you can escape and how escape and where to escape if you have to fight how to fight with what to fight and then a lot of muscle power has to be put to fight this beast to protect your life or to run away from it so this is why this glycogen is only stored in muscles and in the brain you don't have it um, in the kidneys you don't have it in bones you don't have it in your uh, digestive system so you cannot say that this is your normal energy because have more than half of your body is not going to have it it's not going to work unless you're in stress and then if you are in a stress again your digestion is not necessary you don't have to be digested when you're fighting for your life actually digestion has to stop because you need all the energy available to preserve your life so this is why these other organs don't have glycogen. It's not necessary for them. This is a boosting fuel only for stress situations. When we eat correctly and we have a huge amount of mitochondria in every cell and glycogen is released, the amount of energy that we get is unfathomable. This is why, you know, it's known that people uh, driving a car and being hit by another car this happened to my friend in when I was studying medicine in Croatia uh, his car was hit and he saw in less second what was happening could not react anymore and when they found him unconscious the stick shift handle was in his clenched hand they could not pry it off he had such a strength in that moment that he ripped 
the stick shift handle out. I mean, this is incredible power. And this we have when we are in a stress situation if our body is working properly. But now when we are starting introducing glucose and increasing blood levels of the glucose through our diet, it goes over the calibration point. So now the decision of the brain is, okay, let's force it in the cells to burn it. And then as the absorption of the sugar is increasing daily and more and more sugar, more sugar comes that it can be burned. So it goes into the liver because it cannot be stored. It goes into the liver to be transformed into fat and stored as a fat at the same time produces uric acid. So this is why it acidifies, uh, why sugar acidifies our body. But then if the levels of absorption increase even further and it cannot be properly repackaged into the fats, not enough can be burned, now we start urinating it because the levels are increasing so body says okay let's get out with it and we start urinating sugar and there is a progress what happens in the body which I explain in the case of diabetes and why we get diabetes it's all basically tied up to this dietary glucose which we are now being told that it's the only safe carbohydrate which is utter nonsense okay fructose is being blamed as a problem but fructose no matter how many fruits you eat daily how much fructose you take you will never increase absorption of of um, of fructose never so you will never harm your body all that will happen you will get diarrhea from it but glucose is completely different story and it creates a huge problems which nobody is focusing on because we all trust our professors who trust the books same as we are told to trust the books and they are all manipulated the knowledge is partial and we are always led in the wrong direction okay look at fructose forget about glucose glucose is good fructose bad well this is we are same shit same politics it's all politics and um, as we cannot trust uh, our politicians, we cannot trust our esteemed scientists. They are full of it. So, it is very important to understand that glu glycogen is not your regular energy depot. It is there only for stressful situation. Yes, you can get in a stress on cellular level when you have to work and your, bio and your cells do not have enough energy. This is putting them in a stress situation. And when stress hormones are being released, then you become nervous and aggressive. And at the same time, you are becoming hypoglycemic. And it's the combination. This is what's always happening. This is why bodybuilders uh, are very often violent. If they don't pump it out and get their anger on into workout, they become violent, you know, they have one beer extra and pew, they destroy the whole restaurant. Uh, so, uh, and, and the reason is because they use steroids. Now, in this article, it was mentioned that the cells have a preference and uh, they prefer to take glucose to produce energy first and then if it's no more available, then go for for fat, which is incorrect. They are forced to take a glucose, but if the glucose levels of a blood are proper, if we are not taking glucose from the food, if we have only glucose that our body produced for particular purpose, our cells will not use this glucose as a fuel. They will use triglyceride. And as I have mentioned, fasting proves it. And um, thinking of uh, obesity now when you realize what is going on you will find out that as you are taking carbohydrates you are actually producing your fat because you don't eat like very often I say oh what Okinawan food 
is the best and they eat rice and they live the longest life. Longest life, what, 120 years, 115? This is nothing. We should, our lifespan is programmed for much more than this. Okay, and just observation shows you this. And I mentioned this in some of my videos and in, in my articles. Now, Buddha ate more or less vegetarian diet and lived 80 years old. This is about the average. And every vegan and vegetarian that claims health, and I am vegan 10 years and I'm healthy, I'm vegetarian 15 years, I'm healthy. Yeah, because you cannot cleanse, because you always have toxic elements in the blood which prevents hydration on a cellular level and cleansing. No cleansing, no symptoms of cleansing, which are symptoms of flu. Now, which we call disease. Now, the thing is that after cells have really dried up and they cannot function any longer, then symptoms starts happening. And once when symptoms occur in people who are especially vegans, the whole body collapses very rapidly because they are very, very dry and very toxic on a cellular level. So the problem of obesity is because we are eating carbohydrates and we are not eating little, we are eating huge amounts. Why? Because we are, we are working, we have to work. And since carbohydrate is instant fuel, so when you eat it in 10 minutes already, it's in your blood and it's getting into your cells and produces energy. So in 15 minutes, you are charged completely. But then you stop eating. The, the sugar, the glucose that was not used for fuel now has to be stored, cannot be stored as glucose. So it is converted into fat, creates fatty liver and then liver pushes it out into circulation as a triglyceride and gets deposited in your fat tissue, adipose tissue, and makes you fat. At the same time, after one hour, your cellular charge is dropping, so cells are uh, advertising for more food, and the body sends triglycerides. But now cells have only fracture of mitochondria, they cannot supply the enough uh, required energy. So what happens? The cell go into starvation and they demand more food. So body again sends the only thing it can, triglyceride, because that's how it's programmed. This is the energy supply for our cells. Well, the cells have only few mitochondria working, so again, they cannot raise, no matter how much triglyceride, triglyceride in the blood is rising, but the cells are starving. And finally, this creates a stress, which cell produced then stress hormone to tap into glycogen and get the glucose that they need. And by doing so, we are becoming hypoglycemic. Only people, which I call glu glucoholic, glucoholics because they eat glucose, they eat the forbidden fruit, but biblical forbidden fruit, they become hypoglycemic. I can be without food for days and not going into hypoglycemia, not losing power until I lose all my fat and start losing muscles. This is when I start losing power. So what we are being told is a bogus, it's a false knowledge. Glycogen is not what they call the animal version of glucose. It is glucose bonded to protein. It's glucose is glucose, but it is meant to be our primary fuel. It's only secondary booster, only for special circumstances. And do not confuse it as your regular uh, source for energy. It is not. It becomes when we become glucoholics, when we start eating glucose daily and body now has to process it and it basically genetically transforms itself. It changes the gene expression. 
that I mean the gene expression reacts to the environment and changes the cellular action. And before I spoke about it, how what different changes it makes in a body from disarming our immune system uh, to basically dis creating all the chronic diseases that we know of. Okay, so it's really, really a bad idea to go into vegan and vegetarian food. And uh, some now doctors are claiming, yeah, it's great to uh, be omnivore, to eat uh, meat, but we still need at least 20 grams of dietary glucose daily. This is another utter nonsense. We don't need any. We should not have any. No animal other than human has a contact with dietary glucose because the only way you can get it is if you destroy the cellulose that is enveloping the glucose in plants. And you can do it by heating it up and bursting it or by smashing the seed which have the, the protection of cellulose is the capsule on the outside. Since animals don't do these things, they don't eat such a food, they're always healthy. We think that this is cat's meow, that this is the base of our diet should be, this is how we are programmed. The food pyramid is completely, not only upside down, but the most important ingredient, the fat, they want to take out of the food pyramid, leaving the protein on the top. Actually, the whole base should be fat fat and proteins and fruits even and vegetables have no room in our diet we are being sucked into eating fruits because they are sweet we love the sweetness of it and we become distributors for a seed and this is the only benefit that we are providing to the planet earth by eating fruits we don't get any benefit in the body all these antioxidants claims it's all baloney just to sell another supplement product. You don't have to trust me. Just have a courage and try to eat nothing but animal products, which is meat, cheese, yogurt, eggs. If you want to eat worms, if you want to eat the grasshoppers and other insects, you are welcome. They have the highest amount of fat in them. Even, why do you think ant eaters are so big and strong? And why do you think bear even eats ants? Because ants have huge deposits of fat. Because they run like crazy all day long and their whole backside is full of fat. I, I know, I try them. Because here in jungle, it is normal food for indigenous people. Especially termites. Because termites don't have um, the shell is so hard, so they are just delicacy. So, and they are very energetic. Yeah, you need a bunch of them, but they provide a lot of energy. So, we have to change the way we think. We have to absorb this new knowledge because we are being fooled for thousands of years to produce food from plants. The only plant food that is good is good for plants, not for us. There is nothing in a plant that is made to support our life. The only way herbivores use it is because they ferment it. And again, I explained this before. You can go on my other videos or you can better, better yet go onto my site and read these articles because by reading you can memorize more because what you hear some comes in some comes out you have your defense mechanism you have your pre-programming a lot of things what I say is just bounces off and if I ask you now what I said before you have no clue but if you read it you have more time to actually absorb it so I really advise that you go onto my site and read those articles uh, Educate yourself and then don't trust me. Try it. And if you feel problems, contact me because every change of a diet 
requires adaptation. Again, you are changing environment, your genes expression have to change, that will change your cellular action. So nothing happens quickly, but if you want to go straight carnivore, body adapts like this, in three days you are there. If carnivores want to go into herbivore diet, it takes way longer and stomach problems. I was now in, um, on my trip for three weeks and I ate some potatoes and I gained two kilos in three weeks and I was heavy, but I, you know, I was in a potato country, 400 different types of potatoes. I was curious to try them. I knew that I'm going to pay for it, uh, which I am now. And now I'm back home and I'm now on strict meat diet. No vegetables, no fruits, just milk, yogurt, eggs, and any kind of a meat I can put my hands on. And small amounts, because we don't need to eat much. Once, twice a day the most. And uh, my system is now settling down, adjusting. I'm feeling every day now better and better. And um, that's, all, that's, that's all about. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. If you have any comment, please share. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.